We want to kill the scope creep. Hey, welcome back. I'm Michael Janda. In this video, we're going to talk about how to hold your clients to the scope. So there's that old phrase, if you give them an inch, they'll take a mile, that phrase. And I've seen that so many times with clients. If you give them an inch, they'll take a mile. Now, I'm a big fan of going the extra mile for clients, of giving them those extra little things, as long as they don't become abusive to me and take advantage of my good generosity, then I'm fine with it. But I had a client one time, cost me 70 grand in losses, because we just kept saying, yeah, okay, we'll just do that extra little thing, that extra little thing. All of a sudden it got out of control. It became uh, controversial, confrontational, and all those, yeah, just the little thing ended up becoming just a massive, massive blow up. I lost money, I fired the client, it was all kinds of drama and emotional stress. But it all started because we didn't hold them to the scope. And we didn't hold ourselves to the scope as well. We gave them those little increments of room to wiggle and they took advantage of it. So in this video, I'm going to show you the right way to empower you to hold your clients to the scope and have smoother projects and less financial losses. So first things first, you've got to start with a super detailed agreement. This has to be as bulletproof as possible. You need to have a contract in place. That contract should detail the phases of the project, the rounds of the project, the deliverables, every little deliverable that they get. They de you detail what they don't get. Not just what they get, but you also put in there some assumptions of things they might think they are going to get, but they're not included. You put those into your contract as things that are not included. And then you detail out the pricing and a rough timeline. That's what needs to be in your contract. All my contracts are available in my freelance course, by the way. You can check those out. Uh, all my agency contracts, super bulletproof. I think they're the best in the industry. Check them out at the ultimate freelance course.com. Okay, now back to this little lesson. You get this super detailed contract, this super detailed agreement with your client, you get that in place, and then you make sure you have this clause in it. This clause is the clause that protects you. And it goes like this. Any items not detailed in this agreement are considered out of scope and may require a change order. All change orders will be discussed with the client prior to incurring additional costs. That little clause is your protective clause that says, yes, we've took the time to detail out every little thing we can, but if it's not detailed in there, if it's not mentioned, then it's considered out of scope and everything that's out of scope may necessitate a change order. That's the clause that protects you and gives you that power to push back. Then you start monitoring the scope like a hawk. You watch it so closely because you want to hold the client to that scope. And when they do something that is out of scope, a request that is not detailed in your agreement, now you have the power to push back if you choose to. Now, I recommend that you push back whether you choose to or not, if you're doing an extra round, for example, you had three rounds of logo revisions and the client asks for a fourth round, you need to tell them if you're gonna do it for free if it's out of scope. So you do something like this. Hey, that's not in our agreement. We had three rounds in the agreement, but this extra little change isn't going to be super time consuming. So we're happy to include the extra round of revisions. So you mention it like that so that they know that they're doing something that's out of scope. You tell them it's out of scope, even though you're going to do it. This keeps the power in your court where you can then push back on the next round, round five, six, seven, and push back with a change order on those next ones. Okay, so you monitor the scope like a hawk, and then when you discover scope creep, you push back. 
Now, scope creep comes in a lot of different forms. It can be extra rounds of changes. It can be new features. It can be enhanced features. It can be more quantity of something. More pages on a website, more panels on a brochure, more, more pages in a booklet. Anything that is expanded from the scope is scope creep. Now, when you find something that is in a scope creep, when it's out of scope, you're going to push back on the client like this. Thanks for this request. Since it isn't part of the original scope, we would be happy to provide you with a price and timeline to add it to the project. That's the script you want to use. So that's the process of pushing back. Now, step number five is you navigate the client's freak out. This is a lot of times a client's like, well, what, but I assumed it was just one little thing. It's no big deal. I would do it myself if I could. All those kinds of objections start coming into place. But you can stay methodical, stay emotionless, stay deadpan, and just be like, well, we detailed out the scope. We've been going the extra mile trying to provide you with the best quality possible, but it's not in the scope. So let's find a happy place. I'll give you a price. We'll look at that price together and make sure that you're happy moving forward. That's the type of approach. Now, the client's emotional. The more emotional the client gets, the less emotional you need to get. You need to stay in control. If you match them in emotion, that's when the blow-ups can happen. The way that you push back with the contract is you send them an addendum to the agreement. The addendum details the new scope, the new deliverables, and the new price or the increased price. And it's a simple little contract. It can be just a page or two that says, here's what we're changing from the original scope. Here's what we're delivering added to this project scope. And here's the new price that we'll be including in our final invoice or whatever payment terms you decide to use. Okay, I hope that helps you navigate scope creep, hold your clients to the scope. It all starts with the agreement. That bulletproof agreement at the start is so, so critical so critical. I hope that you can improve your agreements, improve your power to push back on clients and get the money you deserve as a creative entrepreneur. Thanks so much for checking out this video. If you want to learn more about freelancing and growing a creative business, check out my freelance course, The Ultimate Freelance Course at theultimatefreelancecourse.com. Thanks a lot. We'll see you again soon.